Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Let's go to Mike in Southern California. Hey, Mike, what's going on? Hey, Tom, nice to talk to you again. And I have to start out and first tell you I love this trading room. This thing is great. This app, it works great. And uh, getting all the information, it, you're like instantly there. No delay, nothing. That's I know. Great. I Listen, Thank I you appreciate again. your growling problem with us. Your channel is in my pocket all day long. It's wonderful. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, man. You Thank you. Now, Tom O'Brien. What's going on, everyone? This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. I'll be with you this week. We have Thursday off. I believe Wednesday is a half day, but we'll... Figure that out after this, um, and then I'll be with you Friday as well. Um, let's take a look what we've got going on. We have the E-mini uh, kind of sideways right now overall in the market. The E-mini uh, up about 0.16%. The Russell Futures down 0.72%. Uh, the NQs up about 0.52%. And those Dow Futures also sideways, and same with the Dow Jones in general. Uh, I don't know where the comp is. Somewhere down here, up about 0.72% uh, right now. Uh, silver's up slightly, gold completely flat right now, uh, copper up about 0.5%, still well under the 520 area we were trading at, trading at 440 on that. Crude oil got a little bit of a pop as well, trading kind of up in the upper uh, trading range. <clears throat> and then, you know, one of the big things, of course, for today is Tesla up 6.3%. Uh, so, I mean, like, it's this is a strange move for this stock, right? So analysts are expecting that deliveries are going to be lower than anticipated, right? You have some argument that the Chinese market has rebounded uh, a little bit. <clears throat> Excuse me, so that might um, add some to it. But the question is, is why is this up at 6.4%? Okay, the put call ratio is pretty decent in favor of like a higher price for this stock. Um, the big thing that I'm seeing people kind of harp on, which is an interesting idea, but is Tesla Energy, okay? So, you know, they have everything for like storage. Uh, they had the solar panels, the Tesla batteries they were putting on houses. Uh, this kind of went away in the general conversation, but they just saw, uh, signed in the, uh, excuse me, a 100 megawatt megapack contract with New Zealand. Uh, that's a hundred million dollars. So we can look through that. The new battery storage system uh, will store excess renewable electricity when demand is low and will provide enough electricity to power 44,000 homes for more than two hours during winter when the demand is high. It's interesting. Uh, the company has also had the option to expand battery capacity to 130 megawatts at the site. And supposedly this is supposed to bring in about $7 billion in, in revenue. Um, but I, I don't see... Let's see here if I can get the exact number. Yeah, okay. So Tesla Energy is projected to generate around $7 billion in revenue this year, which is a 20% increase. I don't know if that correlates properly to a 6.3% in the stock. This is what's so weird about looking at Tesla, right? Um, you know, you obviously have a lot of, like, retail investor hype around it. A lot of it has to do with what Musk's talking about. I couldn't find any major news with them beyond this. Uh, that drives this. I saw some communication on Reddit uh, talking about, hey, let's just like squash the shorts and everything like that. Um, but it's such an interesting stock. You know, I, I mean, again, I would argue that a lot of people, you know, tend to invest in the stock, not because solely of the performance, but really how Musk acts and how he talks, um, which is, you, you know, the approach to this uh, tends to be kind of unique. Um, so regardless, that's what I'm seeing a lot of people stand on most likely deliveries will be lower <clears throat> than the uh, than they were last year. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. But we're up 6.2% for the time being, which I find insane uh, for that stock. One second here. All right. We actually have a call. This is Costa in Boston looking at NVIDIA. Costa, how you doing? Good. How are you, sir? Doing well. What are we uh, taking a look at regarding NVIDIA? I'd like to know where the buy point is on a pullback. Yeah, that's kind of a hard. I ask myself the same thing with this stock, right? We have moved so astronomically in this stock over the, the past year. It's been insane. You know, we're sitting at $3 trillion right now. This is a major move. 
My major concern with this stock right now, and here's the thing, right? So if we trace back, the last day with volume was what, around June 5th, and the low of that day was around 118. I still think we have a little bit to move down in this stock, not <clears throat> significantly, right? And this isn't so much to do with technicals, just kind of looking how this stock has been trading. I think we still have a little bit to move in, but there's no doubt, in my opinion, that NVIDIA is a decent investment right now, right? I don't think this is a short-term play. I think it's a long-term. I don't know by the end of the year we're going to get another ramp up, right? My major concern, I would say, going forward with NVIDIA is how much more are these massive buyers? And we're, we're talking, you know, mainly Meta, uh, Google, Amazon. These are the major buyers. Do they have it in them, these companies, to continue to buy all of these new chips constantly every year just to update their systems. I don't think so, right? I still think we're going to sit around this $3 trillion point. It's for when you want to get in. I would structure it maybe in a sense, like if I were doing this, I, I put in, you know, like $400 or whatever into NVIDIA right now, see what it does the month over, and uh, kind of adjust from there. We are reaching that, like, last day with volume. I mean, we broke through, what? This level around 123.21, and we're down here. So if you want to get in, uh, this doesn't look like a super bad position to be in. Um, but I don't know, you know, we're decreasing volume right now to the downside, which is somewhat bullish, right? Um, I just, I think this is so news driven, right? So if someone else comes out and we have another big tech company that wants to buy a bunch of NVIDIA, we're, we're going to be fine in the clear. I just don't know, at least investing right now for me, um, you know, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't have a super high target for it just because I think we're sitting at three trillion. That is what six times the global semiconductor market last year. Um, I just don't know how much higher this stock has to go right now before we get some more major news. So that's that's kind of my input on it. Um, as far as like an exact price points, I, I can't really say. But, you know, if you wanted to get in and I, I don't think we're going to go much lower in this stock is essentially kind of what I'm trying to say. But on the long term, it's something to keep in mind about their market, who's buying, and will those buyers continue to be buying um, like they have been over the past year or two uh, in the near future. That's something to consider, I would say. Okay. I'd like to buy 100 shares. The 100 shares of the stock? Yeah, I mean, yeah. like I said, I uh, the, the semiconductors are dominant. It's not going anywhere. That's what I love when Basil comes on, right? He talks about, this is the new oil, and he's so right. And we are digitalizing everything, you know, and we're going to continue to. I just get concerned with NVIDIA for myself. I don't know what stimulates the, the massive pop-up in it, right? It's mainly news, but I can't predict when these major companies are going to buy a bunch of them. We, they've already purchased so many semiconductors already, and we still have a long horizon, I think, before we start seeing that, you know, really pay off, right? That's, that's kind of my look at it, Costa. Okay, sir. Thank, Thank you, Costa. Thank you so much for calling in. Folks, uh, we'll be Bye -bye. right back with Steve Rhodes. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that. 
as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Call, call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. I will be with you through the rest of the week. If you take a look over here on my screen, we are on TFNN.com. You start at the home, you're going to go over to the newsletters tab. Now, we have a bunch of great things to look at, but I want to focus right now on Mastering Probability by Steve Rhodes. This is a great, extraordinarily thorough, if you like, you know, a really full newsletter that goes over a lot of different things. This is 100% the newsletter for you. I strongly recommend checking it out. Uh, what's also great is that if you've never subscribed to Mastering Probability, we offer all first-time subscribers, all of our newsletters, a 30-day money-back guarantee in case it doesn't work out for you. So uh, you have no risk. So come check it out. Steve, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. Getting ready for July 4th. Are you a big July 4th celebrator? I can't wait. I can't, can't wait. wait. We're going to have a great time. <laughs> oh, cool, cool. I'm kind of, uh, well, when my kids were young, now they're grandkids, now we've got grandkids, but when the, uh, when the kids were young, I was kind of a pyrotechnic Love it. guy. And in being in the state of Florida, as you know, as long as you're protecting your farm, you can, <laughs> <laughs> you can blow off all these great fireworks. So I, I always look forward to that. This 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 year, pretty much everybody is gone and doing their own thing. So, uh, which is nice because then I can save hundreds of dollars. But you yeah, know, folks, if, if if you've not lived in Florida or been to one of the uh, fireworks places out here, they're pretty extraordinary. Have you gone into like uh, Phantom or any of those uh, fireworks stores? Yeah, totally. And that is something that amazed me as well. That that's not the you know I grew up in Florida, and that's just not the case. I mean, we really go out in Florida. I mean, you, any like every mile down the side of the road, you're gonna have a fireworks um, stand. And I mean, yeah. they're like munitions. They're crazy. Yeah, I love no, it. It's, it's great. So, uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to the celebration. Of course, nothing that beats the uh, Macy's. You know, the New York. The uh, sure. Where else do they do the, uh, the Boston? Maybe they do a big one or what have you. So but even uh, the so small beach communities around here. I mean, they they'll yeah. put on ones that go for like 30 minutes. It's insane. Really? Oh, no, for sure, for sure. So I guess as a, as a, a celebration in this country, we spend a lot of money on fireworks. Uh, we absolutely do. And you got you to gotta show out like that, you know? So. But there's there's no fireworks in the stock market these days. I know, so, right. What are we um, looking at with that? Well, I tell you what. So you had mentioned the newsletter and all the detail that's provided there. Yeah. And yes. uh, so I, I put together this new table for subscribers. And really what it does is uh, kind of like the call that you got from Costa. And Costa's asking the question, you know, where's a buy point? Yeah. Which is really what I do for an hour each day is help people understand, you know, is there a top or a bottom? That's the first thing. You know, are we in the middle of a move? Um, and uh, and where is where is a buy point or a sell point out there? So as an example, and so what I cover here is uh, I've got the, the primary futures, the ETFs. This is just for the daily time frame. 
and then uh, some of the top the top 10 NDX 100 stocks and the top Dow stocks out there. And this is a lot of what people will typically call it. So as an example, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move a stock chart over that's going to cover up everything except for one thing. So I'm going to just put over the ES mini chart right now. And so up above, just so people can understand how this actually works. So we take a look at the ES mini, upper, which is the top row out here. Right now, price at 55.27. If you look at the uh, stock chart out there, you see we've got the same price. And what I do is I provide a, a, a daily outlook. Now, the daily outlook, Jacob, is based upon all the tools that are used to help identify the top or bottom, where is uh, uh, where is uh, support and resistance out there. So right now, with regard to the S&P 500 via the ES Mini, we are in a consolidating bull phase, consolidating because we are consolidating with inside support and resistance. So let's just go one by one out here. So I've got uh, this top says DTT9 support. This is the daily TD9 count. Now, the cool thing about a TD9 count pattern, which, by the way, the ES Mini has a TD9 count top. And this is something that I teach the folks. It's very easy to identify, especially if you're using, you know, daily, weekly time frames. Luckily, I've automated this tool so I can put up any time frame, immediately know what patterns are present. It doesn't mean every time we get a TD9 count top that it's going to be a top. It can, you know, all tops or bottoms can fail. But what helps us is we have a better idea of where we're more likely to see a top or a bottom. In this case here, we've got that TD9 count top. What that set up was a really a couple of different things. One, well, the most important thing is where is profile, where is support? Where is the daily TD9 count support? And that's that red line that's going across our screen. So for example, if Costa was asking the question, where is one of the buy points for the ES Mini? Well, that would be at 53. So you don't have to have the chart. You don't even know need to know the chart. All yeah. you have to do is look at Stevie's table up there. <clears throat> If we're looking for daily profile support, and that would be a more in because that number is higher than the TD9 count, that would be a place where somebody could take a look at entering. And that's down at 5493. And you can see on the chart, that's down at the very bottom panel. The profile, um, where's the uh, daily, where's the resistance level out here? And so this green line, green and red line, is referred to, I refer to that as the oscillator and change line. Not to get into the details about that, but I also teach that to subscribers out there. And right now, the up arrow tells me that that line is green. So when that line is green, it tells me that we have a price oscillator as above zero. That in itself is a bullish condition, generally speaking. But that up arrow, well, and so that tells me that it's green. This also says that I've got resistance. Well, where's resistance? Well, we can see that price is, a, price is below that line. So that's the resistance level. So let's say you were looking to short the ES Mini. You would want to know where that key resistance level is. And when we take a look at the stock chart out here, Jacob, we can see how this green line has acted as resistance for the last uh, five trading sessions out here. Mm -hmm. So if somebody were really had the had the inclination to want to short, what they would be, now that number is going to change as price goes up and down. But generally speaking, if you use you'd be looking at shorting between 55.57 and 55.69, and 55.69 is a daily profile resistance level out there. And then I also happen to show where was the last uh, TD9 count uh, top and the TD9 count bottom. So that's a so it's a, it's a cool uh, tool for uh, subscribers at a glance for the instruments that they trade to know exactly where support and resistance is and from a daily perspective, uh, what's the current outlook. Now, I provide more than just that and other tables, but this is just kind of like the quick go-to for the uh, day time frame. Um, now, we had Costa. Do, do you mind if we kind of just add to Costa's idea? Absolutely. About, you know, yeah. take a look at NVIDIA. I mean, I had some other things Absolutely. planned. Absolutely. Since you got that call, why don't we just go take a look at that, just in case he's listening in, and so we can help to identify possible buyers. So first, we take a look at NVIDIA. NVIDIA has a top. Uh, you mentioned uh, Basil Chapman and out here. This is a wave number seven top. It's a very small portion of Basil's tools out there. When we take a look at support and resistance level, we can see on a daily basis prices trading below the bottom of its profile. Folks, pro a profile, the bottom of a profile is where support is at, where buyers are at. The top of the profile is where the sellers are at. So we know that price on a daily time frame. And so one of the things that I would say to cost is, well, what's your what's your time frame? What is it that you're looking for? Are you more of an intermediate term trader? Is it a, is it a day swing trader? Are you longer term? So we take a look at the uh, daily time frame. In fact, if we went back to that other chart that we were looking at, this would tell us that the bull run from a daily time frame is over. Mm -hmm. Absolutely true. However, to just take a look at the stock chart for just the daily time frame is too myopic out here. We take a look at this weekly chart, which I'm going to go ahead and open up. This does have a TD9 count top. And what we've seen here, whenever there's a top, it says, okay, price should go test support. 
And if it breaks support, where's the next level of support? Well, at this stage here, that's the green line. That's that oscillator and change line. Uh, what price did today was it got back and it tested and rejected that level. Yes. So from an intermediate term time frame, this is still, even though we've got a TD9 count top, it's overall signals neutral. But I would say to cost, uh, Costa, that the uh, buy area inside of NVIDIA on an intermediate term time frame is between 114.15 and 119.64. It only needs to do is tune in at 11 o'clock to listen to the Trader's Edge show. Steve. And we can uh, you know, take a look at that. That is a slick tool, Steve. Thank you for coming on and showing that. I Awesome. No Steve, problem. Thank you so much no for joining problem. us. Folks, we and will be right back. Yeah. Happy July 4th. Dude. Absolutely. You too, Steve. Take care, guys. We'll be right back. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento on Friday, June 14th and Friday, June 28th this month for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LARRYJUNE24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Tom O'Brien Show is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoe filling in for Tom O'Brien. We were just joined by Steve Rhodes, uh, the Mastering Probability Newsletter. He is also on uh, every trading day at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, so definitely check that out. Uh, I had not seen that tool before, so that I was watching that real time with all of you guys as well. 
that is really neat. I was taking a look at it on the, uh, the back end here um, during the break, and uh, I'm just saying, if you have not checked out his newsletter yet, just go ahead and do it. Again, we have a 30-day money-back guarantee uh, on all of our newsletters, if it's your first time subscribing, but uh, definitely check out Mastering Probability, and if you missed it, we're going to have that segment uploaded uh, on our YouTube channel uh, shortly after the end of the day. Let's take a look on some news of what's going on. Uh, Boeing, man. I don't know if you guys watched the congressional hearing with Boeing, uh, the Boeing executive CEO, but they grilled him, man. And it uh, makes sense because the <laughs> stock's just been eroded uh, since the beginning of this year. Uh, trading still at 186, which isn't bad. We had a low of this year of 159.70. Uh, so they're going to buy Spirit Aero Systems, which was making that bad fuselage part, which, I mean, they're doing it for $4.7 billion. Uh, and the... I suppose in the idea that they're going to come back to build more things in-house uh, as, as opposed to outsourcing all of this, which is interesting. Uh, but still, I don't know if that really resolves the issue because the, the, the lack of attention uh, to detail on certain standards was endemic within Boeing itself, not just Spirit Aerosystems, right? Uh, let's see here. So they did previously own Spirit. Um, so they're going to reverse all of that. Uh, yada, yada. We're going to see what happens. It's still not good, but the big news with this is that the U.S. prosecutors want Boeing to plead guilty uh, to fraud over fatal crashes, uh, which is insane. I wouldn't, I don't like this stock. I would not touch this right now. This is so hyper toxic. I had a buddy ask me about this since it's, you know, pretty low. I mean, we're on a year today on this. We go up to a year. You know, I mean, this is probably the lowest it's been, I would say, maybe since, like, pandemic or something like that. Now, I guess in October 25th of last year. Regardless, uh, just toxicity written all over this company. Um, you know, when they, were, when they were asking the CEO, they were, they were bringing up how much he made, which was just so much money. I think it's been, like, $300 million or something like that, uh, roughly. And they were like, what <laughs> justifies you making that much? And he's like, well, I help run Boeing. I mean, with a straight face, like I said, and of course, you got a front for Congress, but I mean, dude, the stock is, the company's in shambles. Uh, every week, you hear about something new going wrong with Boeing. And, and maybe some of that would have happened regardless and just would not have gotten uh, media attention. Uh, but regardless, it's very bad for the company right now. So let's talk about this a little bit. The U.S. Justice Department is pushing Boeing uh, to plead guilty to criminal fraud in connection with two deadly plane crashes involving its 737 MAX jetliners. Uh, Boeing will have until the end of the week to accept or reject the offer. Happy 4th. Which includes the giant aerospace company agreeing to an independent monitor who would oversee its compliance with anti-fraud laws. You know, that even in itself is so weird that you can have companies internally audit you know, for, for, for legal kind of listings. It's just nuts to me. Uh, regardless, the case stems from the department's determination that Boeing violated an agreement. We spoke about this when it came out. That was intended to resolve a 2021 charge of conspiracy to defraud the U.S. government. Prosecutors alleged at the time that Boeing misled regulators uh, who approved the 737 MAX and set pilot training requirements to fly the plane. The company blamed two relatively low-level employees for the fraud. <laughs> like, what? The Justice Department told relatives of some of the 346 people who died in 2018, the 2019 crashes, about the plea offer during a video meeting. The family members who went Boeing to face criminal trial and paid $24.8 billion in fines uh, reacted angrily. One said prosecutors were gaslighting the families. Another shouted at them for several minutes when given the chance to speak, saying they should just prosecute, which I don't blame them. I think there's some justice in that as well because they would definitely get grilled and uh, maybe some more things would come to light, too, uh, and stuff like that, which I think is kind of interesting. Regardless, uh, just, just horrible stuff all around, you know. And, you know, I, I, this is an example, too, of these, you know, like just long-standing companies. They, they're so ingrained into the, you know, military-industrial complex, one, um, but, but it's essentially an extension almost in a way of the U.S. government, right? I mean, they, they've gotten paid for so long to do these certain things. Um, obviously, Boeing is one of the only major companies that makes these kind of uh, crafts. So, anyways, I was watching something on uh, Palmer Lucky the other day, or Lucky Palmer, uh, the guy with uh, Anduril. 
<clears throat> and you know, Boeing and some of the other major companies uh, were competing essentially uh, for, for a U.S. Air Force contract. They're going to have uh, some mothership that exists up in the air and, and then drones around that, and it can kind of control, control the movement of the drones, and the drones protect uh, the, the mothership as well. And instead of going to things like Boeing or Raytheon or Lockheed, it, it went to Andrew. And the minute that company goes public, if it ever does, uh, better believe I'm going to buy that IPO, even if it's overpriced, because that is a phenomenal company in so many different ways. All right, let's take a look. I want to talk a little bit about something strange, and it is the U.S. government moving uh, money into crypto. So we've, we've had a massive kind of egress, one out of crypto funds, uh, which I'm pretty sure I removed off of my watch list because I just wasn't looking at them. Uh, but then you had crypto itself. I mean, let's talk about Bitcoin in particular. Um, that went down about 63,000. Let me take a look at where we're at right now in Bitcoin. Yeah, so we're at 63,318 in it. Obviously, you had uh, some of the ETS for Ethereum going or, or getting, um, I, I guess, regulatory approval as well. But that saw some money move out of Ethereum. Let's take a look at this. The German and U.S. governments are moving $150 million into crypto, which is kind of interesting. The German government uh, transferred 2,700 Bitcoin into multiple exchanges over the last two weeks. And the, the point of me bringing this up is to say for, for people who are still not sure about investing in crypto is that it, you're, you're, you have large governments who are doing it, right? Um, and, and this isn't me defending Bitcoin itself or telling you to invest but just to get like the fullest data you can if you're trying to make this decision, right? This is no longer this, you know, like your grandkids are investing in this weird thing online. Uh, this now has like pretty, you know, uh, tangible effects in the government and the market itself. I would take a look as well into the U.S. moving, let's see here, they had Ethereum transfers as well. Gosh, this is insane. Moved 11 0.84 Bitcoin worth. That was worth around 70, 743,000. And then just moved 11.75 million in Ethereum uh, into Coinbase as well. Super strange. Folks, stay there. We'll be right back. <laughs> If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. 
a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. We were just talking about last uh, segment about transfers of Bitcoin and Ethereum by the U.S. and Germans into Coinbase, which is interesting. This is something I wanted to bring up, too, regarding this. Uh, now, this came out on April 19th, but the transaction, so check this out, right, okay? This guy, Banmeet Singh, he was basically a dark web narcotics salesman, but he, op he operated a pretty large uh, network, essentially. Uh, forfeited $150 million, but that was all in Bitcoin, right? So I think they had something oh, roughly like $240 million on top of that moved into Coinbase as the U.S. government. One of the fears... I suppose you can kind of run into, this is honestly insane though, I'm looking at this. According to court documents, Banmeet Singh, he's of India, Haldwani, and there's operated like major cell, that's right, at least eight distribution cells within the United States in Ohio, Florida, North Carolina, Maryland, New York, North Dakota, and Washington, so nuts. And it is crazy, I will, I'll, I'll be curious to see how he got caught, because it's usually what's so nuts about dark web criminals is a lot of the ways they get caught. I mean, whether this is hackers or like narcotics dealers or whatever, it's always like an OPSEC issue, right? So they used their personal email for something to do with their, you know, shadow side, um, and it always gets them nailed. And so it'd be interesting to see if that's what happened with Bond Meat. But so, you know, the problem is, you know, the government in here, I don't necessarily think the U.S. government wants to hold that much money uh, in Coinbase. Now, it might help at some point you know to have a little bit that they can liquidate the cash for whatever reason uh but a lot of times when they've done that in the past you know they they pay out some of the victims if there is a crime with victims in it um but it doesn't seem to in my opinion i think that's really gonna be the case I don't, I don't know who you pay out in this circumstance so it'll be interesting to see if they hold on to that in coinbase or they dump a bunch of it um but it'd be interesting to note. So if you're investing in Bitcoin, just be aware uh, that this is occurring right now. And uh, yeah, kind of neat though. And seriously, I, I, I'll, I'll look to see really what happened. We could talk a little bit more about that tomorrow just for the sake of it being interesting. Um, but seeing how some of these really, you know, high kind of uh, profile criminals get caught is insane. And it always comes down to hubris, which I think, you know, tells us something a little bit. Let's talk a little bit more about stuff in cyber as well. Um, obviously, you had CDK get hacked. I'm trying to pull up uh, that story a little bit. Um, but, you know, I want to throw this into, like, how important this kind of stuff is, right? So just going over the past year, this whole thing about 1 billion stolen records this year alone, okay, in, in cybersecurity and cyber attacks. Let's see if I can pull up. Uh, we'll just look at Cisco at least, right? even though it's a little different than all of that, trading at 47 and 46. But I just want to say this is, this is going to be the future, right? Like companies that are able to provide security solutions are going to be so valuable in the future. I, I think that once younger people start getting into positions of governance in these companies, you're going to see that start to become more serious. Uh, I always make this... I always kind of liken it to the concept like you know, a lot of CEOs uh, at least have some background in law, right, um, or some experience in it. And I think in the future, 
the CEOs, you know, they'll probably still have that, but also have a massive background uh, in IT as well, just because of how important it is. But, you know, you have a data leak of 73 million uh, for AT&T. Still nobody knows what that is. Healthcare hackers store, stole uh, a bunch of medical data uh, <laughs> from United Health Group, of course, which is nuts. You obviously had Synovus ransomware. Ticketmaster had a 560 million records stolen in a snowflake hack. And that was recently, too. I mean, that's just insane, right? So we talk about some interesting news with this and cyber insurance premiums, okay? So there's a company uh, in downtown St. Pete called Wallace Walsh and Willingham, and they uh, are an insurance company. And I, what I found unique about them, I have a friend who worked there, and what I found unique about them is that they were giving cyber insurance, which I think is super neat. And uh, I think that's becoming a little bit more prominent now, uh, but I haven't seen uh, too much of it. But cyber insurance pricing is still falling 15% since its peak. So we're seeing, you know, I would suppose that's kind of people not investing as much in it is kind of responsible in a sense. I, I, insurance premiums get kind of weird with how they're priced like that. But the past 12 months have seen some splintering of ransomware groups, increased, increased collaboration between hackers and tacit support from hostile governments. Um, attacks jumped 85% between 2022 and 2023, which is an increase by 30%. Investment in cybersecurity and insurance coverage are paying dividends in this environment with the insured companies now less vulnerable to prolonged disruption. So it's nice to see, again, that you're having some spending uh, regarding this, uh, at least getting the, the in premium. So people are, or, excuse me, the insurance. So people are taking this seriously, um, but you're still getting an overall reduced spending uh, to prevent having to use this, right? So at some certain point, you're still going to get premiums increasing, even if you have more people uh, joining, if uh you know, certain positions aren't taken in order to secure the company. It's interesting. I think, too, with this kind of stuff, um, if the government makes it, which I, I think is the way to go, um, if the government makes it required, if you store records or something like that on one of your personal servers to have insurance, then we can start seeing a more, uh, prob probably less breaches for some time until they get wise again, um, is, is kind of what I would say with that, which would be kind of nice. Anyways, I just find it kind of interesting, regardless. All right, let's see what else we are looking at. I was looking at TMF a little bit. That's tanking today, which is kind of sad for anyone wanting interest rates to come down. Let's see here. It's loading this way. Sorry, I'm waiting for my computer to load here. All right. All right, let's pull up while I'm waiting for this to work. Let's pull up Chewy real quick because that's some other news going on. Uh, obviously, uh, Roaring Kitty had a big position in that, so let's take a look. We're down right now 6.83%, uh, uh, but earlier we were not. You can see this massive run-up to, what, 39.17 in this stock is insane. Uh, so it soared more than 20% in pre-market trading on Monday before pairing gains after an SEC filing revealed popular investor Keith Gill at his Roaring Kitty has a 6.6% stake in the company. A July 1st filing showed that Gill, of course, Roaring Kitty, owned 9.1 million shares of Chewy on June 24th. It indicates Gill owned the shares before it uh, post on X, formerly known as Twitter, from the Roaring Kitty sent Chewy shares soaring. You know, I am so interested to see, okay, let's see, this is what's nuts. Let's pull this up here. Okay. You have a class action lawsuit against this guy as well saying that he essentially misled people, right? And this is more to do with GameStop. I don't even know what GameStop is trading at right now. Let's take a look. That is crashed, yeah. Yeah, trading down 4.6%. So this is the, the lawsuit with it. You get into this weird, I really want to finish this when we get back, but you get into this weird realm of like, you being an influential uh, investor or trader or whatever, and you, you sharing your information. Obviously the state of Massachusetts wants to hit this guy. Um, with essentially trying to influence the stock price. Um, anyways, folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back.
The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. Before we went to the break, we were talking about how uh, Roaring Kitty took a six, has a 6.6% 6 .6 stake in Chewy. And then how he's also being sued now um, for alleged, I mean, what's basically going to be selling in to buyers that he, he told that he was investing in GameStop in. So, individually on behalf of other similarly situated by plaintiffs on the sign. Let's see here. Press release is published regarding the Securities GameStop Corporation analyst reports and advisory about the company and information readily obtainable on the internet. Plaintiff believes substantial additional evidentiary uh, support will exist for allegations set forth herein, and basically the idea is that he was essentially uh, trying to get people to invest so he could sell off of it. It is uh, pretty nuts, and, and that's what we were talking about here when that happened. You keep in mind when you when you invest in these meme stocks, and it's one major guy doing it. Same thing when Musk talks about Doge, he he's going to sell into you. You know, it's kind of interesting. Anyways, let's take a look uh, here as well. Uh, just for a quick thing, since we have only a few minutes left, uh, I found this pretty interesting. The credit cards get stress test spotlight with losses hitting 40%. So as the Federal Reserve released its annual stress test results Wednesday, uh, this released Friday, the central bank called out credit cards as a key driver of a bigger capital decline than last year. So Ally Financial Incorporated's card portfolio fared the worst under the hypothetical recession with a projected loss rate uh, topping 40% among the other firms with heavy Theoretical losses uh, were credit card giant Capital One and then Wall Street Titan Goldman Sachs. For the second year in a row, Goldman 
was projected to lose about a quarter of its credit card book in the Fed's downturn scenario. It's the latest signal of a lingering consequences. The firm's now aborted foray into consumer banking in recent years, as well as a porthole into the quality of its total card portfolio. And again, they were backing the Apple Pay as well. Uh, Goldman shares fell as much as 2.9%. Uh, after the Fed said its common equity tier one capital ratio uh, fell to 8.5%, down from 14.4% uh, year end. Folks, thank you so much for joining me. I will be with you tomorrow uh, and then Friday as well. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. If you missed my interview with Steve Rhodes earlier, I would strongly recommend checking that out, giving us a like and subscribe afterwards. Have a great rest of your day.